All right, let's look at some hairlines. Hmm, interesting. FUE hairlines. What? <laughs> okay. Celebrity hair transplant. No! What the hell is happening? Time to look at hairlines and talk about naturalness. Yeah, we need to talk about hairlines because in 2018, it is getting bad out there. Modern hair transplant patients are getting some of the worst results that I've seen in a long time, and they're becoming more and more common. For reference, let's look at Kyle Christie. Okay, I'm not here to pick on Kyle Christie. I will be talking about his situation later, but the point being, he had a surgery only two years ago in 2016, and it's no better than my own results that I had in the early 1990s. But yeah, we'll talk more about him later. I just wanted to get it up there so you have a better idea of what I'm talking about. And that's what this hair transplant class is all about. Hair transplant class number 12 is going to talk about hairlines and how to make sure that your result is going to look natural or how to avoid unnatural results. I like that better. Well, it's actually pretty simple. But if you ask yourself what defines naturalness, some of you will say that naturalness means density, a high density, a density so high that you don't have a see-through hairline. That's actually not true because you can have a low density hair transplant that looks 100% natural. It just looks naturally thinning. Others of you will say that the frame of your face, the design or the shape of the hairline is what defines naturalness. Now this is not really entirely true. It's more true than the density issue, but you don't wanna be a 35 year old white guy with a hairline of a five year old Asian boy. <laughs> just, I've seen it and it looks ridiculous. Naturalness when it comes to surgical hair restoration and hairlines simply comes down to whether or not it looks like you were born with it. Eureka, you think? It's silly to think otherwise, but unfortunately it looks like a lot of you aren't getting it. The whole point of surgical hair restoration for the past 35 years with better clinics that actually give a shit, has been to replicate nature as closely as possible. The goal has been to create this. This is a non-transplanted hairline. This is a hair model that's never had surgery before and you can see this hairline looks awesome. Forget the shape and design. Some of you think it's too, it's too receded, but that's not the point. It's a natural hairline that this guy was born with. Some of you guys are getting hairlines that make it look like you want people to know that you've had a hair transplant. But it's a lot like women that get their lips plumped up so big that you can't not know that they had it done. And let's not even talk about these YouTube guys that are talking about their hair transplants that they got in Turkey. I mean, they're nice guys and everything, but they don't know what is natural. I, I just want to... In order to discuss naturalness and how to make sure you really understand why hairlines aren't looking so natural today from a lot of clinics, we have to have a short history lesson. You may or may not be aware that there are two types of hair transplant surgery today in 2018. You have FUE, where they take the hair out with a small punch, and you have FUT, where they take out the strip of tissue from the back and sides of the scalp. But did you know there's actually two kinds of strip surgery? Yes, way back in the ancient days of the late 1980s, there was a procedure introduced called mini micrografting. This was a huge improvement over plug surgery because mini micrografting was a lot more natural and plug surgery just sucked. But why did mini micrografting look so much more natural? It looked more natural because simply the grafts were smaller. They were small enough to where you had to have magnification in order to see them properly. What kind of magnification was used? What do I mean? Well, I'm talking about loops. These things. And this allowed technicians to take the strip of tissue and dissect it into smaller pieces and then take that further down to micrographs and minigraphs. What are micro minigraphs? Well, a micrograft has one to two hairs in it and a minigraph can have five to 12 hairs in it. 
smaller than plugs, but still kind of big. And it was at this time that the concept of putting smaller graphs in the hairline was born. The problem was that the loops that were providing magnification were not strong enough so that technicians could see if a single hair graft was truly a single hair graft. And the result was that those ones and twos going into the hairline were more twos than they were ones. And this photo shows what I'm talking about. When you see these three graphs, you see a three hair, a two hair, and a one hair graft. But if we zoom in, you can see that in this one hair graft, there's actually a second hair. This cannot be seen when you're using loops, but it can be seen when you're using microscopes. Yes, microscopes, introduced in 1996, allowed for a much stronger field of view, greater magnification, so that technicians could see for the first time actual follicular units. This was a huge deal. And with these microscopes, we could see that these single hair grafts that were going in the hairline were actually doubles. So we're able to avoid that. And this ushered in the ability it doesn't mean automatically, but you had the ability to make the most natural hairlines ever in history. And with microscopes, we had this kind of field of view to where the tissue was super magnified. I mean, you can really see the details when looking at tissue through a microscope. And the use of microscopes also allowed for a strong increase in the survival rates of graphs. It was documented that on average, the graphs had a 30% increase in survival rates compared to mini micrografting. So finally, any good doctor that had an artistic understanding of hairlines had no excuse not to be able to make hairlines that were indistinguishable from this hairline. And using microscopes in strip surgery is the very definition of follicular unit transplantation, or FUT, where FUT was far more natural because it was transplanting follicular units, which are hair bundles as they grow naturally in the scalp, and with mini micrografting, which had larger grafts, more hairs per graft, and less natural results overall. And this is where clinics started to tell their patients that the only kind of grafts that should go into hairlines were single hair grafts, because now they are able to actually deliver. If it wasn't for that damn scar, which is where we get FUE. Follicular unit extraction was introduced into the North American market and shortly thereafter in Europe in 2002. And FUE had two main challenges facing it when it was first introduced, and that was, or those were, lower survival rates than with strip and fewer numbers of grafts available in one or multiple surgeries. And the clinics that were introducing FUE were already strip clinics using the microscopes. So naturalness was not an issue because when the grafts were extracted, they were still examining them, refining them, doing whatever they needed to do to make the most natural result possible. See where I'm going with this? But around 2010-ish, maybe 2011, clinics were getting it right. The survival rates were getting real close to strip and the number of grafts available were much higher. So FUE was much better. But here's where the problem started. More and more clinics were starting to open that were only offering FUE. Now this was great for the consumer because they had more clinics to choose from, but the problem with these clinics is that most of them had never touched a strip surgery or participated in a strip surgery, or if they had, they didn't have that much experience with it. Which means that they also didn't have much experience, if any at all, with microscopes. And that leads us to today. In 2018, we have more hair transplant clinics than we've ever had in history combined total, and almost all of them are FUE only. Some do use microscopes, but most don't. And because of that, we're getting results on a regular basis like this guy. I mean, judge for yourself. I mean, compare a mini micrograft hairline like this guy got from like a long time ago to hairlines that are being produced today by FUE only clinics. Now I'm not picking on, uh, like I said, I'm not picking on any single clinic. I'm talking about clinics all over Turkey. Turkey's really bad. But I'm also talking about clinics in Europe. I'm talking about clinics in England and the UK in general, all over North America and of course Asia. Now I showed you the natural hairline that had never been touched by surgery. And I was talking about how with FUT, better clinics had finally reached the pinnacle of naturalness. I may not have said that, but I'm saying it now. They had reached the pinnacle of naturalness around 2000. 6 to 2009. That was when more clinics performing FUT were getting results that were indistinguishable from nature or, or close to it. 
So let's look at a hairline that was created around 2006, 2008 using microscopes. This hairline hasn't been touched since 2006, and I am certainly not saying that it is a perfect hairline. In fact, I myself have a couple of doubles in my hairline, but that's okay because it's like maybe two. But compared to hairlines today being produced by the majority of FUE-only clinics, the difference between the amount of doubles in my hairline versus the amount of multi-hair grafts in newer hairlines is huge! Huge, 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 huge. Huge! <laughs> So let's look at some more hairlines that I pulled from clinic galleries online from various parts of the world. Now this hairline is a classic example of what I'm talking about. Let's throw that up there. Now I've said earlier on that the shape doesn't matter for this discussion, but for this video, this picture is going to be representing the graft work. We blow it up. While there aren't as many multi-hair grafts as some of the results we've seen already, there are plenty right here in the center of the hairline. Next result. This is a lower resolution image, but even at low resolution, you can see how stocky the graphs appear. If I adjust it just a bit, and then we zoom in, all of those hairs sticking out of the hairline look like the rougher teeth of a comb. This result, this result has so much potential because it is fine hair, and while he does have a fair amount of singles, there's still a lot of multi hairs in the hairline. This poor bastard, I mean, oh wait, that's me from 1992. <laughs> Here's another one. Great shot, very nice high resolution image for presentation of the result. Let's have a closer look. Zoom in, check out that hairline. Look at those thick graphs. Look at the multi hair units in, going along the entire hairline. It's like, it's riddled with them. This next result has another pluggy appearance. It looks more like the finer teeth of the comb, but then when we look at the profile, this is the tell. This is how you can really tell this is a hair transplant. When you zoom in, you can see that these corner hairs in the temple are much thicker because they're multi-hair grafts compared to the finer hairs in the temple point on the side. Here's another patient with some low resolution images. Real quick, we'll check out this profile. You can see the stockiness, but let's flip it. And this is the real tell. Kind of tilt it a little bit, zoom it in. Now the more observant of you out there might be saying, hey, these are all coarse hair results. They're not all coarse hair results. There are some coarse hair results. But let's take another look at a fine hair result. <sighs> Do we have to zoom? Okay, zoom in, fine hair stocky, pluggy, forget the angles that are sticking out like, yeah, okay, you get that. Remember, these are on clinic websites where they're showing off their best results. Even through this foggy Vaseline covered lens, we can see that it's a pretty good result, but zoom in. Do I have to say it? Now it's time to look at some hairlines where the grafts were inspected and refined using microscopes. Fantastic result. We zoom in on this and we can see that there are proper singles in the hairline. You can't see any plugginess, but the naturalness is there because of the way that the singles have been identified, prepared, and any doubles or triples moved behind the frontal hairline. This is good work. This is the result I was referencing earlier when I was talking about how high density is not necessary for 100% naturalness. It's good density, but it's not very high density, but it's still 100% natural. And this result is another fine example of what microscopes can do. There's no plugginess. You don't see any you know, thick groupings of hairs in the hairline. 
This is something that would be indiscernible from an original native hairline that he could have been born with. When I was doing my research, I came across this image. Now this image is a dish full of various follicular units from a clinic that is not using microscopes. They extracted them, they put them in the dish that has some sort of holding solution, either saline or hyperthermosol, I don't know. But you can see that these graphs are separated into the specific dish based on the number of hairs. You've got singles, doubles, triples, and quads. You can see by the number of dots. But when we look closely at the single hair graphs in this dish, you can see that there are actually plenty of doubles that are sitting in the single hair dish. And this is the problem that I'm talking about. If they can even separate the singles properly, how can you be sure that you're gonna have a majority single hair graphs in your hairline? And that's the whole point of using microscopes. It helps you to avoid this kind of issue where you wind up having more multi-hair grafts in your hairline that you would normally see in a hairline that wasn't reconstructed with surgery. Microscopes are the key, but unfortunately, this aspect of surgical hair restoration and the refinements that were once more commonplace have apparently been lost. That has been a lot of information. But fear not, we're in the home stretch. So what do you do with all this information I just taught you? Well, if you're gonna have a hair transplant for your hairline, whether it be your first surgery or your seventh surgery, this is what you gotta do. You're obviously gonna be looking at clinic websites, their galleries, maybe their YouTube channels, maybe their Facebook pages, Instagram, all that good stuff, and that's what you should be doing. When you're looking at all these photos and videos, you have to be able to see if the hairline is visible at the scalp line. In other words, can you see the hair exiting the scalp? You'll actually see pretty quick that that's not very common where you can see the actual hairline. You just see it flopping down. Maybe not like that. But you have to look to see if you can see individual hairs coming out of the scalp. If you can, that's when you can ask yourself if those hairs look like they're natural looking hairs, like maybe the hairs in the side of the scalp, or you can use a comb to compare. Do the graphs look anything like these rougher, thicker, or do they look like the finer, 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 finer teeth of the comb? If the graphs look anything like either side of this comb, that's not really a good thing. The next thing you have to do is when you contact the clinic or clinics of your choice that you're considering, ask them yourself, what kind of graphs are necessary for the most natural result possible? Every single one of them will tell you single hair graphs. Every clinic's been saying that since around 1995. And that's when you ask them if they're using microscopes or not. If they say they are using microscopes, they believe in stereoscopic dissecting microscopes for, for creating the best results possible, then that's a good sign. If they're not using microscopes, then you have to ask them this next question. If you're not using microscopes, how can you be sure that only those single hair grafts that you said are natural for hairlines will actually go in my hairline? I've already explained to you how during mini micrograph days and using loops, the magnification wasn't strong enough to prevent that second hair from slipping through. And that's why mini micrograph patients have a lot of doubles and even triples in their hairlines. So if a modern FUE clinic tells you that they're not using microscopes, what's the difference between that and mini micrographing from 20 years ago? <laughs> there really isn't one. Well, well, there is one difference. The grass are extracted using a small punch as opposed to a scalpel. That's it. And this brings us back to Kyle Christie. <sighs> I don't want to pick on this kid. He's, he's young. He's making decisions without maybe having the best advice or guidance. But there is nothing right about this hair transplant because this is just, it's just, there's nothing good about this. We have the graft work, which I've been talking about for the past 15 minutes but we also have the shape, and then we've got the temple points, the triangular uh, tufts 
that are behind our eyebrows, mine, mine are right here, those were also reconstructed and they were reconstructed using bigger graphs. It's already hard enough to recreate temple points if you have coarse hair, but these are graphs that have multiple hairs in each one. That is the worst way to try to recreate temple points. Yet here they are. And the reason I am bringing this up about Kyle Christie is because, again, it seems like his hair transplant was designed to make it look like he had a hair transplant. Almost as if it's some sort of status symbol. But what he's had done to his hairline is not that different to what I had done 25 years ago. 26. The two key differences are the hairline shape and the density. He's got more density than I had, and of course the hairline shape is... Well, it's not even the same universe. But the bottom line is, this is not something that others should aspire to achieve. But because he's such a visible public figure in the United Kingdom, I can't help but think that people are thinking this is okay. I don't know. I, you guys tell me. Say something in the comments. Let me know. I mean, tell me. But Kyle Christie, if you do see this video, please contact me. I want to help. I want to help get your hairline sorted. I can help you to get it more natural looking. I can help with the density. We can even work on the shape, on tweaking it a little bit to where it'll look more natural for you as you continue to age. And you will continue to age, just like I did. So send me a message, contact me, go to my website, Hair Transplant, or through my Twitter, direct message, uh, DM, comment down below, something. <laughs> Let me help you. <laughs> Okay, enough about that. Um, oh yeah, same thing about uh, this guy too. Mike, what's his name? Mike, Mike, his, not Mike Cassini, Mike Cassini. Sounds like I'm saying Mike Cassini. Mike Cassini, he's also had a hair transplant and while it's not as bad as Kyle Christie, it ain't looking too good. You can call me too. Whew. Okay, you know the drill. If you like this video, then prove it. Punch that like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what the hell is wrong with you? Subscribe, hit the button down below so you can get some updates for the next hair transplant class, which will be hopefully sooner than this one came out. I need a beer. Good night, see ya, bye, peace. <laughs>